Hello everyone, hope all of you are fine, doing very, very well and ready to study about pharmacology. So let's start with the pharmacology. We are going to study pharmacology from our channel Pharmacology Notes and it is delivered by registered pharmacist Romara Shaheen, the gold medalist. Yes, today we are going to discuss about direct acting sympathomimetics. Direct acting sympathomimetics, sympathomimetic drugs or all those drugs which directly mimic the action of sympathetic nervous system. Yes, it directly activates the sympathetic nervous system. Those drugs which help us to pop the stress, that is sympathomimetics. Sympathomimetics are of two types, it could be direct acting and indirect acting. Direct acting sympathomimetics are all those drugs which directly mimic the action of sympathetic nervous system by acting on adrenergic receptors. While indirect acting are all those which will deal with uh, in or interferes with the release of neurotransmitters but do not act on receptors directly. As an adrenergic receptors are of alpha and beta adrenergic type, then alpha adrenergic Receptor uh, selective drugs are also present and beta. We are going to study about today that drug that is selective for beta 1 receptor and slightly alpha 1. And the name of drug is dopamine. Yes, have you heard about dopamine? You must have heard about it. Yes, dopamine is a drug which is immediate medical precursor of norepinephrine upper naturally in the central nervous system and vessel ganglia and, and also present in adrenal medulla. In central nervous system it acts as a neurotransmitters. Let's have a look at what are the side where it is present. Yes, where it is present the dopamine, it is present in central nervous system and it is present in adrenal medulla. In central nervous system it acts as a neurotransmitter. It is an immediate precursor of norepinephrine. This is a site and where the action site is. We produce its action. Yes, it acts on adrenergic receptors. Yes, it will act on alpha 1 adrenergic receptors and beta 1 adrenergic receptors. Yes, alpha 1 and beta 1. On alpha 1, it acts on alpha 1 receptors at high doses. When dopamine is given in high doses, it will act on alpha 1, and when it is in a lower doses, it is selectively acting on beta 1 receptors. And then it acts on adrenergic, it also acts on, yes, it must act on its own receptors, that is dopaminergic receptors. Yes, and dopaminergic receptors are D1, D1, and D2. Some action is produced here while acting on these receptors. If it will act on alpha 1 receptor, it will cause vasoconstriction. Yes, it will lead to vasoconstriction. While when it will act on beta 1, it will cause positive monotropic plus positive inotropic action. It will increase renal perfusion. And when it acts on dopaminergic receptors, it will cause vasodilation. Now, if we say that it is unnaturally acting neurotransmitter naturally present in our body, this is also a drug of choice even in the case of cardiac shock because it is a drug which is and also have effect on renal system. Yes, this dopamine also heals up the neuropathy which is caused by this cardiac shock. So let's see that how this is dopamine is synthesized in our body. How this dopamine is? Synthesize. So we will have a look of a neuron. There's the cell body of a neuron. 
Yes, the precursor of this dopamine is self tyrosine. And this tyrosine, by a special transporter, transported, this is transported into neuron. Then this tyrosine undergoes hydrolysis. Yes, this tyrosine by hydrolysis get converted into dopa. And what is that enzyme? That is tyrosine hydroxylase. Means the enzyme which caused the hydrolysis of tyrosine which leads to the formation of dopa. And this dopa by an action of another enzyme that is dopa D carboxylase. Obviously that will remove the carboxylic group is responsible to form dopamine and there is a recycle ready to make it storage and this dopamine again with a special transporter will be transported into this recycle where this dopamine is stored. And dopamine by beta dehydroxylase will be converted into norepinephrine. But we are not studying about norepinephrine today, but we are studying about this dopamine. Yes, clear, clear to there? Yes, tyrosine comes, enters into the membrane, across the membrane, by tyrosine hydroxylase, get converted into dopa, and dopa decarboxylase converted into dopamine, and this dopamine is stored in the vesicle. Now let's see its actions. Yes? How it produces this action by acting on adrenergic receptors, which is main actions. So, heart is more and more important in our body, so let's start with the cardio. Vascular system, cardiovascular system, and cardiovascular system. Let's draw a heart here. This is a heart having SC node, AB node, and myocardium. Yes, which receptor is present on it? On cardiovascular system, it is beta one. And why all this dopamine comes and acts on this beta 1 receptor which is present at SA node? What happens here? On SA node, when it comes to the SA node, yes, it will activate the beta 1 receptors and increase the heart rate. And this increased heart rate is termed as positive. Oh no action which means the rate of contractility is increased and while it act on uh, sorry it will I do not ready it to baby it will act on myocardium when it will act on myocardium and stimulate beta 1 receptors it will increase to volume its contractility of heart will be increased so that is termed as yes positive I know topic action and both of these things that heart rate and stroke volume will lead to increase yes it will lead to increase cardiac output because cardiac output is equal to because this cardiac output is equal to heart rate into stroke volume the cardiac output will be increased and when it will act on renal site, what will happen there? At renal site, we have a receptor that is beta 1. At renal site, obviously, we have a kidney and kidney to plug the metabolites have beta 1. If you like on beta 1, and does this to increase the perfusion to the renal dopamine dilates renal and splenic nerves. Artery, sorry, and by activating dopamine receptor, separate will also increase the blood flow to the kidney and it will be clinically used in the sympathetically and used renal neuropathy. So, 
Dopamine is used where? Where we can use? Which are the therapeutic uses? Yes, now you can judge from here that we were using epinephrine, a drug, choice of a drug in course of cardiovascular system, but due to its vasoconstriction effect, the dopamine was vasoconstricting the arteries towards the kidney and towards the kidney and viscera, blood flow was decreased. So there is the chance of neuropathy. And if there is a neuropathy, so we cannot give epinephrine. So dopamine is a drug of choice when there is a cardiac shock. Whenever there is cardiac shock and with this associated uh, in the neuropathy. Then it is by when it's showing its action, it is biotransformed by catecholomethyltransferase and monoamine oxidase. These will cause its biotransformation and thus this is side effects will be very slight. That anxiety, hypertension, headache, that was a very slight effect. Hope so that's clear till there. Stay tuned with us. Keep watching our next videos. And thank you for watching.